You know, I, I want to interact with my environment more than any game has ever allowed us to do. But the idea of going through every door and every nook and cranny. Creepy, quiet, silent element. Let's just like give us that freedom a little bit more. For one fucking game! Well, we're best friends with this person. It doesn't matter how much I want to play that one game, it's not going to happen. Because, I mean, I mean it's just, but it's if, just but, if, but if I knew... I'm Foisco. And I'm Link584. And you're listening to... To Podcast! Podcast. Hey there, this is Link584. And of course, I'm Foisco. And today, we are talking about... Oh, you want me to say? Yes, I want you to say. <laughs> okay, well, since it was my idea, <clears throat> we are going to talk about um, game exclusive, or no, console exclusive games. Yes. Specifically, you had some really strong feelings about it. <clears throat> okay. Picture this. Okay, way back in the past. Um, How far is way back? Let me start, okay? Well, I, if I'm going to envision the process, I would like to know how far way back are we talking, because last week is way back to me. Let me finish without interrupting me, and I will I will describe the picture you are to be imaging. Okay, I will close imagine. my eyes and imagine. You are standing in line for the PS3, Okay. You are like number fifth in line. You are so excited. You could like vibrate and shake so much that you're just going to like, you know, start an earthquake. And you walk into the doors and <gasps> God of War 3 or whatever is PS3 exclusive. Is there any PS, I mean, uh, Microsoft uh, Xbox 360 exclusives? Yeah, there's a bunch of third party ones, but... Uh, Halo is a good example. Halo? Halo. Okay. And in the other line across from you is the Xbox 360 console line to get in. And, you know, you're not even in that line. <clears throat> Maybe it should be reversed. So you're standing in line for the Xbox. And and um, you're fifth in line. You're excited. And then, you know, the PS3 is over here. And it has the... Um, God of War series, and you're really excited, and you really want to play that God of War series, but you're in the wrong line. But you're not going to go buy a PS3 for one fucking game. So, I think that the game companies would make a lot more money if they didn't have console exclusive games, because in my opinion, I am not going to go stand in line or go buy a PS3 because of one game on that system. I mean, like, is the game good enough to buy a whole console? Mm, no. And I'll be fair, I've never played God of War, but it is a console exclusive, so I'm just using it as an example. Don't harass me later on because I, you know, whatever went off. But I personally am not going to go out and spend 500 whatever dollars on a new console just to get that one exclusive game. I'm going to say screw it and go with my favorite. And buy all the little awesome games for the Xbox 360. Okay, so that's that's what you're saying is is what exactly what am I supposed to pull from that? You said two things, I think. Yeah, I kind of changed it up there in the middle, but like basically, what I'm trying to say is that I am not going to go out and buy a console just because it has a exclusive game that I want to play, like. I mean, unless this game was, like, the perfect of all games, like, it was, like, every game that we have ever described that we wanted, if it was on that game and it got all high reviews and, like, everyone gave it a 10 out of 10 and a 100 out of 100 and, you know, it was the perfect, most awesomest, epicest game ever, I'm not going to go out and buy that stupid console to get that one game that I kind of want to play. Okay. Well, so wait, so wait, so wait the tooth and the other thing was you said you... you wish that you'd feel that it'd be more beneficial for the companies if you were a company just to have the game be on the multiple consoles anyway so even from a company's point of view you feel like not only would we win as consumers but they'd make more money because more they would have more consumers period they have a larger base exactly why limit your sales to one console because i mean let's be honest there's a lot of fanboys and fangirls out there but the majority why? aren't 
is what you're trying to say. Well, right? but right, like, okay, every company has their own little, like, you know, head of marketing kind of thing. Okay. Well, the head of marketing has to say, this is an untapped market. All of those PS3 fanboys and the Xbox 360 fanboys, why not offer to everyone so that you have, you know, the people who are PS3 exclusive people can play it on their PS3 and not worry about it. Or how about the people with um, just the Xbox 360 who, you know, love the game? Or even maybe people like you and me, not that we play our PS3, but we have both consoles. So maybe we go out and we buy the game for both systems because we want the achievements on one and then we want the trophies on another. Like, it just seems to me that it, they would make a lot more money if it wasn't console exclusive. I see what you're saying. Well, I mean, I understood what you're saying to begin with, but there's two areas uh, when it comes down to the console exclusives. There's two different areas. There's third-party developers, and then there's the actual company themselves. Oh, jeez. Sorry, guys. What was that about? My pant leg was stuck underneath the table. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, pant legs aside, the two points that, uh, that you pulled away from that was, one, they'd make more money, and two... Um, was you know i can't remember what the other one was but 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 the point is overall you're saying that it sucks it just sucks period well just two different things like i was saying though which is the third party developers and you also have the company themselves uh i remember when the xbox the original one came out uh they didn't have any games that they made themselves it was all third party developers so when it come when you're a third party developer i would think that you'd want to get your uh, game on as many consoles as many platforms as possible so you can make as much money but when you're a company that's actually making the games yourselves as well as being the producer of the console like nintendo nintendo has a bunch of franchises uh, like zelda mario donkey kong metroid pikmin uh, you know they have all these different titles all these different series that they create also as the company that makes the consoles so when you have that area i would see why you want to you know keep it within your own home base because you're really selling and boosting your console because when i look at nintendo i can say okay these are all great series and they're all going to be on that platform then i look at something like microsoft or sony and I look and I say, oh, okay, so they just got God of War and a couple monster truck games or something. It's not for me, but even as a as a regular hardcore gamer, I, I don't see why you'd be sold on just a couple series. Nintendo has like six or to eight different series that are just tied to them. And they're all, if you like one, traditionally you like at least three or four of the other. So that makes sense from Nintendo's point of view. Okay. But I don't understand... These other ones, um, at least until they're built up a little bit more, I'm not going to be, you know, looking at it and say, okay, the next Halo is here. I'm going to buy the console just for that. But then when you take a game like Halo, which is built around multiplayer, I feel it can be justified a little bit more when it's tied to the company like that because this is a game I remember I playing Halo 3. By the time I was done doing multiplayer, I must have put 500 plus hours into that because of every weeknight playing a few hours as well as the weekends and it just slowly built up over the course of a couple of years that I look at that and I say wow that's like I paid a dollar per hour versus some games that I might buy new for sixty dollars and I say wow geez this game was sixty dollars and I got twenty hours out of it so it's like three bucks an hour Halo was one buck an hour because I got so much out of it that I could justify probably purchasing a console just for that because of the sheer number of hours. So it's relative to, I think, what game we're referring to. Um, and if it's tied to a third-party developer or the company themselves. If it's a third-party developer, I think they should put it as many platforms as possible. Because they're not tied to anyone. So why not try to make as much money as possible? But if you belong to the actual company, like, Net, uh, like uh, Nintendo and... Uh, Microsoft and Sony, they each have their own franchises within them. 
I see why they want to keep it with another base because those are supposed to be an extra selling point. And for Nintendo, I think it's the only one that truly works. Okay, I <clears throat> I want to go back to that point um, where you were talking about how Nintendo has a bunch of series, you know, like six or whatever. Well, I didn't add in Nintendo into that group bracket for a reason. Nintendo has, um, in group bracket, I mean, are my, my further story at the beginning thing. You know, it was Xbox and PS3. Um, anyways, Nintendo is basic. It, it's like, it is a form of gaming, but it's like a family form of gaming. Like, they're... <sighs> Are there... I don't even think that there's, like, M-rated games on Nintendo, is there? Oh, there is. They had one of the goriest games that I felt sick at. Okay. I mean, they don't have... It's not a staple. You'll be... For every, like, five you find on Microsoft and Sony, you'll find, like, one on Nintendo. It's very, very small base. Right. So it's basically their... Their little niche is... Is family gaming and, you know... Like, they're kind of just not on the same level of console wars as Xbox and PlayStation. Like, it's just not quite the same. Not to say that they're not, you know, up with the times and good, but it's like, they offer a different kind of gaming. And you know that when you go out and you buy a Nintendo game that you will never, ever get um, one of those games on the Xbox or the 360. Like, I mean, Mario, or Zelda, or Donkey Kong, etc. You will never find those games on another console, unless it's a Nintendo console. For the Xbox and the PlayStation, for example, um, Call of Duty, um, give me some more options. Like we were saying before, Halo and God of War. And, no, no, no. Um, oh, well, the Uncharted series. No, no, no. We're not doing exclusives. We're just doing... Um, just oh, you mean just mean hardcore games? No, just um, let's see. Like Dark Siders. Um, Dark Siders is that on both? What you want on both consoles? Mm-hmm. Oh, I honestly don't keep up with it that well. Um, on what's both? I mean, there may be some more overlappage now these days, but well, there used to be a very firm lid on it, keeping it separate. Like there used to be a lot of third-party developers tied with just one company. But you know what? That could have been part of their agreement to have it be made on the console for all we know. I don't know how it works. If they have to contact Microsoft or, or to get a developer kit and maybe they said we'll only give you a developer kit if you are exclusive to us or what. I don't know how this stuff works behind the scenes. Well, I don't either. But what I was trying to say was is that like you will never find a Nintendo game on any other console. But, like, when it comes to an Xbox title, because I'm pretty sure that um, Call of Duty games are P PlayStation and Xbox. And, and Nintendo. Call of Duty, really? Yeah, like, because they're third party. A lot of third parties, like I said, a lot of them do go on multiple consoles. Huh. A lot of the games that you find on, my, on Xbox and PS3, part of the reason why you don't see them on the Wii was because their hardware wasn't up to date. Because for them... Nintendo knows how to make their games within their hardware limitations, and their best sellers are always their own games. They're good at making the best stuff for their own console, which is how it should be. They should know the in and outs of their stuff, as well as their market base. So they are really good at it. So if they don't have as much support for the third-party developer, it sucks. But at least they know that their games that they make themselves... They were always hard hitters. We're always going to get their hard hitters. The hard hitters for the other consoles, we'd like to have on the Nintendo. Because Nintendo is... this. They make hard hitting games. But their hardware does not keep up with the graphics. But that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm saying that, but that's part of why you don't see them on there. But Call of Duty and all that stuff, it is, on, it is on there. Nintendo but... does have them. <sighs> okay, new thought. <clears throat> Call of Duty. Right. And games like Skyrim. And I've heard a lot of people say that they will buy their single player games for the PS3 and they will buy their multiplayer games for the Xbox 360. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> 
you'll find all sorts of games that match for both the Xbox and for PlayStation 3. And, but like, I lost my thought now. But, just, but you were talking about the separation of the two. Well, yeah, but you... Well, I, th- well, I think I get um, on that topic why people do it that way. It's because the PS3, uh, supposedly, I say supposedly because I believe they do, but from what I've seen in enough comparisons on a bunch of high-definition games, is the PS3 supposedly has better graphics than the Xbox 360. But from whenever I look at it, it doesn't look like much. But whenever I look at cutscenes made by certain companies, uh, specifically They make you want to cry. Company, you know, Square, Cough Cough, uh... It's yeah, they're be- they're the most beautiful cutscenes that can ever be rendered. But it looks like when it's in game, I don't notice too much of a difference. But I believe the PS3 can handle it better. Um, but the Xbox 360 and the, and the PS3, these are the most powerhouses of consoles that we've ever seen. The next one is going to be even more of a powerhouse, more than I believe that we're even ready for. <laughs> but I think we are ready for them. But I mean, the more of them we'll tap into for a long time. I'm not ready for them. But I mean, like really, the PS3, you know, so you buy it for that, but then. And you get the best quality. But I think most people, like you said, do the online on the Xbox because it has better support. Sure, it's not free like the PlayStation Network, but because you pay for it, I feel like theirs is better. Not just because you pay for it, but because the money goes into that. So that it just feels better and more uh, easier to navigate. I feel like you can find your friends better, you can connect and matches better. And you know what? It just overall feels better plus i think the controller actually feels better too when it comes down to that Mm -hmm. it just feels slicker when it comes to doing the multiplayer it fills your hands well exactly and you're just spending a more time doing the stuff like that with your friends you want to be the most comfortable right but um uh i still can't think of my thought well what about a new thought what about what about something else when do you move on from that but it was an important thought. Well, you're talking about the separation of the two consoles. Well, what I was... Uh, oh, well. I am very excited for the next generation of console wars. However, I am not excited because, as you may know, I've probably given it away plenty of times, I am a wicked Xbox fangirl, okay? Love it. It's awesome. Not to say that the PS3 isn't good. It's just, you know, there's not a lot of games on it that I like. So, you know, I go for the Xbox. That's where all my friends are. It's what I was introduced to first. However, I did have a PS2 and still do. It's like famous with, you know, some some of my favorite games are on the PS2. So, you know, whatever. But anyways, I am not excited for the next console war because I have spent so much time trying to build up my gamer score and it's like, well, what happens if I get a new console and, oh, you know, it's all gone. No, well, no, it shouldn't be gone. It should carry over. Well, I know, but like, what if it doesn't? No, I believe they will carry over with those two companies since, uh, especially since Nintendo doesn't have an achievement system and hasn't yet, they don't have to worry about any of that crap. But Sony and Microsoft, you know, they're big companies on their own, so they'll have a way for them to carry over. So, uh, but it's like, you know what, I'm, I'm ready for the, those next consoles, but I'm not at the same time. Like, if they announced them tomorrow, I'd be intrigued, but not excited. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, right now, this seems to be the dull, the dull area now. Because we are, this is the longest console period we've ever been in. All the console wars took place every four years. And up until now, it's been a dramatic thing every year. You know, we have the we had eight eight pixel things, with, you know, on the NES, and then they jumped. You know, we had eight bit, then it doubled to sixteen bit. So all of a sudden, you know, and, si- and that's a drastic change. It was so much more detailed than before, and then after that, you had you know the Nintendo sixty four and the PlayStation. So then you went to three D, completely drastic change, and all these were happening four years apart. And then we really went into the high-res graphics when we started going into, you know, a little bit more smoother polygons with the Xbox, the, the PS2, and the, uh, and the GameCube. Things, you know, those squares became smooth. And then the next console war, not only did they become smooth, but they became, started to become a little bit more realistic. Now we're just going to go from, you know, pretty darn good, re- you know, graphics right here. We got the nice realistic to more realistic 
and that, that that's not as big of a jump. And this console war is a little bit longer now, because before it was every four years. We're on like year six right now with things like the Xbox 360. I'm okay with that. So now it's not as exciting. I mean, even with the Wii and the Wii U, it's still, you know, it that was a little curveball. But you know, on the 3DS, but it seems like we've come to a calm plateau. Okay, here's one. Here's one. Because we are getting a little off topic, but, you know, whatever. It's kind of my fault. The Wii U <clears throat> had a game that I really wanted to play, like, really, really, really badly. Zombie U. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Anyways, <laughs> yes, I really, really wanted to play it. But I was not going to go get my little butt out of bed and, you know, go buy this console just to play this game. So... If you're going to make a game, make it for all the consoles, and guess what you just got? Another customer. <laughs> well, well, there is a difference, though. Uh, I know that the... that was for that kind of console, but I'm not just talking about, you know, like the Wii U. Like, I understand that that was like a specific, they had, you know, all these different functions. Like, when the Wii came out, it had that weird motion control with your remote and, you know, whatever thing. Right, and now the Wii U has the gamepad and stuff. And, and so they they tailored that game to go with Nintendo. I'm not even talking about Nintendo in this because they create masterpieces all on their own. But, like, that's just another example of how I would not go out and buy a console just to get a game. Yeah, like, in this case, you know, it's different with Nintendo. That they got, this is a third-party exclusive. Like, this is not made by Nintendo. This is made by Ubisoft. Uh, or at least I believe it's Ubisoft. And the thing about that is you look at this game and I feel like, uh, regardless of the reviews that we've seen about it, you know, if it was better than what, you know, we saw, then I feel this game could have been built without the gamepad. Like, I bet they could change it for the other consoles. You know, so as technology is evolving and doing things like that, they could adapt from one format to another. I know part of the thrill is going through the menus and having the you know enemies behind you and all that stuff, but they could have done something. They could have maybe split your screen whenever you go into a menu or something so you could still see behind you or whatnot. They could have done something. So I mean, so, so that's really getting to another interesting when it comes to third-party titles and exclusivity. You know, is that as technology is changing, they could make the same game in multiple formats because, in fact, they did the exact same thing with Batman Arkham City. They made a Wii U version that used Wii, Wii U functionality. But it's perfectly fine to play it on your PS3 and Xbox 360 and PC. So that's an example of having a game that has Wii U features. So as technology is changing, why can't you adapt per format like they did with a very popular game? I agree. I concur. Did you have more to say? Well, <clears throat> it would be nice if they had more games that were, you know, that, that weren't console specific. Like, I understand that they say, oh, check out all these awesome games. You can only get them here. It kind of entices you in to buy the console. But I can guarantee that there's a lot more people out there who are saying the same thing as me, that they are not going to go out and buy a console just to get a couple games that they might want to play, no matter how good they are. I mean, say like another, you know, like the most epic zombie game came out. Like, I'm not going to go drop, a, you know, a whole bunch of coin to get one zombie game. Well, here's a curveball for you. What about franchises? Popular franchises and all stuff. What if you had... Okay, we already know Nintendo has like six or seven, right? What if each console had... Like... And I mean, like, you personally. Because, you know, like... When it comes to Nintendo stuff, if you like one of their six or seven main ones, Mario and Zelda, you're going to like the others. Donkey Kong, etc. You know, generally, you like the majority of the group when it comes to, to them. Well, what if Sony and Microsoft had their own versions of that? What if each one had, you know, six to ten exclusives and the majority of them were good? How do you pick which console you want then? You say, okay, you get the one that you've been used to, the Xbox, I guess, for you. Well, in the end, you say if you had to pick, that's the one you get. But you say, you know, if you, ha if you had the choice and you had the money to get more than one console, 
you know, you don't you you're saying that you wouldn't spend the money on the console just for a couple games. But what if now all of a sudden both consoles had a fair number of exclusives and they were all good. You you had great quality games on both of them. You pick you get your one that you want and then you do get the other, right? So and I'm seeing as time goes on, each company is getting a little bit more of some you know third party developer games and all stuff, but they're getting some more exclusives now. So eventually, won't you hit that point where you will be convinced to buy like a PS4 or something because of the good games on it because they're headed in that direction? Um, probably not until it had dropped significantly in price. But why? If they have a bunch a list of good games. What would you stop you from, from getting that? Well, because I already have so many awesome games to play on the new console that I've just purchased. Like, I mean... Well, let's say then you play them all, you know? So, But you could see yourself getting it within the first couple of years then, right? Correct? And you say you also... So that's one question, and the other question is you say you wouldn't if get a console. If it was, like, more than ten games... More than ten... Well, are we talking series, or are we talking just, like, sp- like specific games? Just, just like, specific games. Maybe even a couple series in there. Because you look at it, and you say, I look at ten games, and I think that's way more than enough. I think as long as a console has at least five, ga- five great games, then there's a reason to purchase it. Yeah, I say about yeah. ten. Ten is, closer to ten is more fair, but when you look I at it, and you say five. I say probably ten is, like, a minimum. I would probably go, like, fifteen. 15? Yeah. Well, because I look at it, and <clears throat> and you only play, like, you know, five games a year. You know, so 15 would last you for, like, three years. You see what I mean? So why would you need that many to, you know? I mean, you play a lot of, we play a lot of games, but, I mean, overall, we look at how many total Xbox and PS3 games we have combined. Mostly Xbox. We have probably about, it looks to be about 60 games. That's at a rate of 10 games a year over the course of six years between the two consoles combined, you know. Mostly Xbox, like we said, but it comes to about 60 games. That's 10 a year. And we actually haven't even played probably about 15 of those because they were stock- we've been stockpiling. Well, yeah, but those are your games. Those aren't my games. Regardless, you look at it and you say, you you throw out a number like 10 or 15, and that's about, you know, one to three years worth of your own collection, worth of your own buying right there. You're saying that you would need three years worth of games. Well, see, is, I, isn't, I, is, I, isn't, isn't one year worth, you know, on its own appealing right there? You have a whole year, a year. That could be 1% of your whole life, you know. I would just need a lot of games to buy, like, a specific console, okay? I mean, Be- because you're, you because... and I are playing Darksiders, okay? We're recording that. You and I are also playing Borderlands 2, and I, on the side, am playing Skyrim. That's three games. Like, you know, we find the time to play these games, and those are... Th- th- three games in like a couple months like i i can't imagine i'll stick with skyrim all that long but this week alone well maybe not this week but last week you know that those were three games that i played in one week true but they weren't to completion well no it's not like you're beating a game a week so i don't understand your argument because in darksiders we look at and we say well, we because been, we're technically well, recording that one, and I have to wait to play Borderlands and Darksiders to play with you. Right. So outside of that, well, I mean, even then, you look at a game like Borderlands, we're putting, you know, together, and Darksiders. Those two games, by the time we're done, Darksiders would have taken us about four and a half months, five months to beat. Okay, well, to be fair, we only play those on weekends, because that, we're recording them. Right. But, I mean, that's the stuff that we do together, and Borderlands is lasting us, you know, Ever since it came out, Borderlands Two, that is, but these other games you look at, and you say Skyrim, you are on like your third playthrough or so. Second. Yeah. Second playthrough, you're going through, you're doing your stuff, and, and but in the end, that's gonna last you for weeks. And you look at some of you have a, a a DS game, you're doing the Harvest Moon game, that's lasting you 
for months. You know, because you're doing little things here and this. So by the time you're done, if you add them all up, you're probably realistically beating from start to finish of stuff that you've enjoyed. You're probably only beating a maximum of 10 games a year. A, a, a definitely a maximum. Because one of the things is we buy big games. Like, I played Tales of Vesperia. That lasted me 40 to 50 hours. And I haven't even gone through and done a second playthrough yet or done the extras. And that lasted, and that lasted me for probably about half a year. Yeah, but to be fair, I play a lot more games than you do. That is true. But in the end, you're probably only doing about ten games a year. I'm only doing about four. Like, really start to finish. Okay, alright, fine. But still, I like a lot of good games when I buy a console. Otherwise, it's just not worth it. We bought our PS3, like... A year ago, two years ago now, and we have barely touched it. We played Flower and Heavy Rain, and I think you may have had 3D Dot Heroes in there for about 10 minutes, and... I didn't. Okay, no, it was, um, uh, Little Big Planet. Yeah. That, okay, seriously, that's how much we've touched it since we've had it. Well, but but you also are saying your argument for getting the, let's say, the next Xbox or something. You need a bunch of new games. Okay, here's four games at launch. That's a bunch of new games. You see what I mean? That's not even close to a standard of wanting 15 games or so. I said 10 to 15. Yeah, and you, and you, and you said they have to be good games. So it's probably going to take you a year and a half before you even purchase a new console. Do you know how long I was playing my PS2 after the Xbox 360 came out? So, uh, but The only reason I ever got an Xbox was because you gave it to me for my birthday. <laughs> Right, but I mean the point is for what you're arguing is uh, so you actually wouldn't buy a console at launch. I never said I would. This wasn't about launch. It was about, well, yeah, it kind of was about launch, but not really. It was about buying a console for a particular game. Like, I would never go out and buy the PS3 just because I wanted to play the God of War series. Right, so you wouldn't buy, you know, an Xbox 720 or a PS4 or whatever these are going to be. At launch? And, Fuck and, no. And t- until they have one. So if, in the end, you could actually see yourself getting a PlayStation before an Xbox if they met your requirement. A yeah. bunch of good games. That's all you want. You, you, you're not tied to, like, okay, here's a couple exclusives. You're not crazy about just a couple exclusives. You, if, if they're on both consoles, you'd prefer to get the Xbox. You know, the Xbox. But, but overall, uh, uh, if one had a bunch of exclusives over the other and you liked them all more, and it was been out for a while, you would get that. If the PlayStation 20 came out and it had 10 to 15 games that I wanted to play, like, you know, Oblivion 8 and Borderlands 23 and um, Fable 7, etc., 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 okay, if whatever came out tomorrow then yes i would probably go out and buy the playstation over the xbox quadrillion if you had a few exclusives you if, said. and but it also is I that mean, what you're saying or, or if it had a bunch of games if it had a bunch of games that you know if it had more games that i liked to play then I would buy any console. I said just because I'm a console freak, you know, when it comes to the Xbox 360, <clears throat> excuse me, does not mean that I don't love the PS3. But what I'm saying is, is if the Xbox comes out with one Halo game and the PS whatever comes out with, you know, Next, God of Skyrim War. and, you know, God of War and The Sims and... Um, Borderlands and Left 4 Dead and yada yada, then I would totally go for the one that had all the better games. Right. This is, I'm not but talking. You know, but you never understand, like the people who. So you, but so you said, but you never understand the people who particularly buy a console just because of one game. You you could never justify that. No, because it's like, I mean, I don't have the money to go out and buy a brand new console at launch date, as well as the one game that they have. I mean, that's just you know, ridiculous. Like, it doesn't matter how much I want to play that one game. It's not going to happen. It's, I'm going to say, screw it. I'm going to go with the console that's going to give me the most enjoyment, which just happens to be the Xbox. I'm not saying that, you know, the PS3 is shit because it's not. It's an awesome console. I'm just saying that one to five to nine games is not going to convince me. 
I mean, you know, maybe nine games would convince me, but like but one, or, one two or, two. or three, right. it's it's not going to happen. It's fuck you guys. I'm, you know, I'm going to go with the console that has the better games. So gaming companies and the marketing companies should expand their horizon and, you know, like... But what about when it comes to... Well, see, although that's kind of a problem, and I hate to interrupt you, but I had a thought. If all the game companies came out with all the games on all the systems, then I would have absolutely no reason to buy the PS3. Right. So what about the companies like Nintendo and, uh, and you know, like that, where they have their own exclusive games that are tied to the company that's also making the console? Because the majority of the games that we play, 98% of them, are made by third-party companies. Okay, but well, then I... we have some, like we look at Nintendo... They're not. They make a console, but then they also make all these exclusives. Uh, 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 don't, but then you no, look at someone. I told you to cut out the Nintendo because that's a whole other story all on its own. Right, but you're completely missing the point. So if you listen for a second, you'll hear that there. I was saying like Nintendo because they have a bunch. I'm referring to them is that's the direction that the other companies want to head. Sony and Microsoft a little bit is they want to have some more exclusives, so then we have more incentive to buy their their games, like. God of War is a Sony title. It is a Sony title, from what I can tell. Just like Halo is a Microsoft title. It's not a third-party company. It, but it, They are the ones who make the consoles. They're the one who also makes the game just like Nintendo does. But they don't nearly have as many as Nintendo. So when it comes to those games, do you feel they should be multi-platform too? No, if a particular know. company makes a particular game, if Microsoft goes out and makes the next Borderlands 3, then fine, they should be Xbox exclusive. And if Sony makes the next God of War series, then it should be Sony exclusive. As well as Nintendo, if they go out and make the next Just Dog or the It Dog or whatever those games are, it should be Nintendo exclusive. However, if... Um, give, give me a, Give me a game company. Like um, Havoc or something. I think I saw that once. Havoc comes out and says, I'm going to make the next um, uh, Darksiders 3 game. You know, they should put it on all three consoles. Right. So like, if you're I a mean, third party company, yeah. have it on all con- consoles. But if, it, if you're the company who makes the console, who's making a game, you should obviously keep it to, your, to yourself. Yeah, kinda, of course. Kind of like how there's um, the streaming networks, Hulu and Netflix. There's Hulu Originals. And Netflix originals. Yeah, I would never expect those to, oh, I'm a Hulu original, but I'm going to go on to Netflix now. Like, that's just ridiculous. I mean, I mean, if, if a game company wants to make a game for their company, then fine. And they should. They should build up their arsenal. But what I'm saying is, Sony or Microsoft, I am not going to go buy your next-gen console just because you've got one game that I want to play. Right, so you, you got to up your arsenal. Yeah, you gotta you got to kick, kick it up a notch. But the third-party... You know, companies, they need to advertise and do the smart marketing thing and expand their horizon to all consoles. Because, say, one family only has a PS3. Well, you know what? They said, oh, man, this game looks awesome. But, oh, it's only for the Xbox. That sucks. I'm not going to go out and buy an Xbox. That's a game sale that you just lost. You put it on the PlayStation 3. Yes, we can buy this game. This is so cool. Right, because like, people can't, a lot most people can't make that two hundred dollar to four hundred dollar jump to I, get the just for I know a game or two. I know me personally, I can't go out and drop coin for a new console for one game because I can't afford it, and I'm not gonna go be irresponsible and spend my money where it, it's not gonna be worth it to me. So, you know, it would just be smarter to you know like offer to everybody, open up. Get, you know, how do they say that? Um, diversify yeah but like you know this is the market you're selling to this is the market you could be selling to why not combine them right now some of them uh, you know like I said having a franchise is probably one of the best ways to do it you know if you're Sony or Microsoft or something to go out and maybe purchase the rights to some of these franchises and all stuff that's how you can up your arsenal and do all this stuff but until that's there they should be on all consoles and all that stuff. But, like, it's... it. So if I was all of a sudden to old, like, well, right now you look at it, it's Ratchet and Clank series. There's, like, five games for that. That's that's a good number for a series, and each game is, like, 30 hours long. 
you know, and there's a lot of collectibles and extra stuff to do. That's Sony exclusive. I'm pretty sure Sony does not make that. It's made by someone else, but they've got the rights for them. Um, to, or I think to be just on their console. Now that's something that's great that they've done. That's a great selling point because that's an amazing series. I only played the first uh, one or two. Uh, maybe even or just the first one. But I had a lot of fun with it. I've been itching to play it for a long time. That's the way to do it if you're, if you're a company like Sony or Microsoft. Take a playbook from Nintendo and have your exclusives. Um, and as they're heading in that direction though. At the same time, as a consumer, it makes me sad because I want them all on all the, on all the platforms. But obviously, to have all these great game companies, you need to have competition. You need to have these people, you know, with exclusivity and all this other stuff. So it's, Why it's. Can't... I'm glad that that's what they do because then we get more games out of it because they're more they're that are better because they're competing against each other. But in the end, you do lose if you find if because there are going to be more games that are better. But we're going to have more games than ever before, so I'm not really crying over it either. But why can't they just all these companies combine and make like a super console? Because it does, it just wouldn't work. Why not? It, it would be epic. <laughs> it would be like the play Xbox Sony Nintendo three thousand. When the three thousand come in? I don't know. That like every Ooh. new product has to have the three thousand or the nine thousand or that's so nineties or be like you know um um nine thousand and one and then their slogan could be it's over nine thousand. <laughs> well, so eventually there will be a point where we could buy a console over the idea of exclusive exclusivity. Well, uh, as of right uh, now, because of, because of multiple franchises, but we are hitting finally an age where I look at it. And, um, and they said, don't bring Nintendo. With it. But if Nintendo was, and they have been up until just recently, really, with the Wii, they've separated themselves from the rest of the bunch. Because Nintendo was ahead of the pack for the longest time. They were number one. You know, Microsoft came in uh, later and Sony did and all that stuff. But then, you know, Sony's been around for a long time now and so hasn't Microsoft. But, you know, Sony was ahead of the pack. And even when they were out, you know, Nintendo 64 was right up there. Because there was no real mature rated games and all this other stuff, but they had shooters and GoldenEye and all this other stuff. And then when the you know the GameCube came out, it was not as high end as the other you know consoles that came out. That's when they began to flip you know a little bit, and then they went with the whole Wii and all this stuff. But they are still a competitive console, and. For argument's sake, let's just pretend that they're like the PS3 and the Xbox 360. You no know, weird controllers or anything like this. Well, I personally am a huge Zelda fan. If I was told that tomorrow we had Zelda for the Wii U coming out, and or let's say it was launch day, here's the Wii U, and here's the new Zelda game. It's like, well, geez, y you have my money already. I mean, it's for me, it's... Here's the here yeah here's the for the, let's see console three hundred plus the you know plus the, here's my four hundred bucks, just right off the bat just so I could have that one game without the guarantee of any other fun games for the console. Isn't that what you did with the Wii? Sorta, um, I I had the GameCube version of Twilight Princess, but I uh, I did not play it. I bought it the same day actually as I did the Wii version. I bought them the same day. And I've never played the GameCube one because I wanted the GameCube one for collector's sake, but I wanted to play it for the Wii. And it turns out to be one of the best decisions ever. It was a ton of fun. And in the end, um, I bought a bunch of Wii games that day. I don't, but that was uh, right after that. That was uh, I stopped buying new games. So that day, I spent a ton of money, unfortunately. And now I'm in. The, now I'm a used game type of person. But if I didn't get all those other games that day and so on and so forth. Regardless, I was still happy with my purchase and the ability to play Twilight Princess on the Wii because it was just the right thing. And if the Wii U came out and said, hey, here's the next you know, Big Zelda and all that stuff, I would get it because I would compare it two ways. Is one, I am getting a long-term game that I am happy with for my $60 value. How do you know you're and happy with it if you haven't played it yet? I haven't, but because by the way I know uh, is uh, my expectations are there because I've had 25 years... Of constant happiness with the Zelda series. But you're not even 25 years old. 
No, but I mean, looking at the games themselves, joke, honey. I get it. Is uh, the point is is that I have been happy with this franchise. This franchise has produced so many games now, and I have enjoyed them all. That it's just like, it's there. Whenever there's a Zelda console game, I've enjoyed each one, and I've loved it. That it's it's just whatever magic they put in there is just incredible. And I go in there with a fresh slate every time. You know, I as much as I love Zelda and all that stuff, I am expecting that day where I come across maybe like a bad Zelda, you know, for the console or something's not there. I feel those things when they're not there, so I'm not completely blind to it, even though I am a mega fan. Like that one game that we just don't talk about. I don't even know what you're referring oh. to. Isn't there like a Zelda game that's like the black sheep of the series that we just don't talk about? Oh, the, well, there's Zelda 2. That's a black sheep because of the way it was built. Isn't that but, the one we don't talk uh, about? No, there's the CDI games. But that's because they're not official. Oh. Um, But anyway, what it is is, so you have this, if Zelda came out, I would get it because at that point, now we're talking about longevity and we're talking about the idea that there's going to be this amazing game that's not just a good game. Like, I'm not expecting, like, here's the next good game. I'm expecting one that I'm going to be in love with. The ones that will create memories and ones that you just you just feel something that's incredible once you're there. I mean, so for me, because I know it's going to get such a legendary feeling, I can do that. But if it's, let's say, the next Mario Sunshine, yeah, I mean, or Mario Galaxy, or Donkey Kong Country Returns, or whatever, you have all these other ones. Not until the numbers build up, because I know they're a bunch of good games, but I need more than one or two good games. But in this particular case, if I am expecting just legendary, just feeling that it's just incredible, <laughs> that's, that's something that I could give up my money for, but only that series does it for me. So I'm sure there's some people out there that have a similar feeling that if you have a particular series that you are just so over. Or if it's a multiplayer game, a, sp- a particular multiplayer game like Halo 3 was. Halo 3 got so many hours out of it, you could easily justify a brand new console just for that one game because of the sheer number of hours that you're going to be putting into it. But if it's only going to be a 30-hour experience, no go. So if it's a long-term multiplayer experience, I can understand why you would do it. Or if it's a legendary experience, like I have with Legend my Legend of Zelda. Legend, wait for it, <laughs> So those are the two circumstances that I could do it. But if you only have one or two good games, even if they're great games, I can't do it unless it's truly that great of experience or there's going to be a certain amount of longevity to go with it, like in multiplayer. <clears throat> Okay. I respect your point. I think that's all I got in me left. You know, I think that's about it. Um, I want to see a lot more games um, that aren't console specific. And I want to see Microsoft and Sony build up their arsenals. You know, hey, if you want to make a game, then you make it for your console because it's your company. But you third party developers, nope. All consoles or Xbox. And don't do any of this weird Kingdom Hearts stuff. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's a new topic. I think that'll be next time, though. I think I have a gaming chat that revolves around just that. <clears throat> because they're the only company that I know of that does that. Yeah, so come tune in with Link584 and his gaming chat, and he is going to give you a ride of your life. Uh, he's going to talk to you about Kingdom Hearts. We'll have a conversation one day about that. Yeah. It just, I don't know any other companies that do that. There might be some way that do that a little bit, but I can't think of anything. Like I look at it, I well, I know it's one thing. It's a whole other topic if we were talking about if we had, like, you have the console versions of Zelda, for example, but then you have the handhelds. And with that, we're out. Thanks for listening. <laughs>